Hello everyone. In this episode, I'm going to talk about uh, perfect Bayesian equilibrium. Um, I wanted to do this uh, in uh, potentially several uh, episodes because I am going to give you a very important definition and this definition requires you to understand four important requirements. And so I wanna go over those requirements one by one. Uh, to, to make each one of them 100% uh, clear. And for all of those, I'm going to use exactly the same example. Well, if you look at this example, as you will see, it's not a game with incomplete information. This is a game with complete information. The payoffs are perfectly known by all the players. Well, how can I distinguish whether a game is a complete or incomplete info? Well, if nature is not one of the players, well, then this is a complete info game. If nature is a player, if nature has any move in a game, in a game tree, well, then that means this is a game with uh, incomplete information. All right, so there's no nature here, um, and so it's a complete info game. However, it's an imperfect information game because player two cannot distinguish whether player one has acted or picked L or M. Well, what's key here, which was... Uh, the problem we sort of highlighted in incomplete information game is that the Nash equilibrium and the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium are going to give us exactly the same strategy profiles, meaning uh, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or the concept of sequential rationality. We cannot use, use this concept in these games because there is no proper subgame. So therefore, we have to either get rid of this idea of subgame or relax this or sort of extend this concept of sequential rationality uh, so that it can be applied to any games, uh, even though the game doesn't have any proper subgame, which is exactly what we're going to do. All right, so let me start with the key definition. A perfect Bayesian equilibrium consists of strategies and beliefs satisfying requirement one through four. So I'm gonna give you four requirements, requirement one, two, three, four. These strategies and beliefs must satisfy all those four requirements. If this is the case, well, then we call this strategies and beliefs perfect Bayesian equilibrium. Here in this definition, uh, you have to be clear about one thing. Equilibrium now consists of strategies and beliefs. The beliefs part were never part of equilibrium. If you remember, whenever we talked about Nash equilibrium or Bayesian Nash equilibrium or subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, we only had a strategy profile, sigma, which is sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma n. So strategy for each player. And that was it. The strategy profile was an equilibrium. But now we should have not only strategies, but also beliefs. So we need a second component to define an equilibrium. All right. Well, now, in the first requirement, we will actually clarify what we mean by beliefs. We already know what strategy is. All right, so the first requirement. At each info set, the player with the move must have a belief about which node in the information set has been reached by the play of the game. For a non-singleton information set, a belief is a probability distribution over the nodes in the information set, for a singleton information set, the player's belief puts probability one on the single decision node. Okay, so what does that mean? That means here there are there's one decision node, one singleton info set, and one non-singleton info set. All right, so there are two info sets. So in the non-singleton information set, there should be a probability distribution over these decision nodes. So because there are two decision nodes, I'm gonna call this one or put here mu and therefore here one minus mu. What about this info set? Well, because it's a singleton information set, well, it's a probability one. We do not need to write it, but just for this case, I'm gonna write. Well, what is the uh, idea of introducing or sort of putting belief here? Well, 
Uh, those beliefs are going to help us a lot when we define sequential rationality in the second requirement, but it's coming up later. Well, here, the beliefs are basically going to tell us, uh, given that strategy profile is, is, is played, I also want to know about the belief system, meaning the belief system is going to tell us what player two believes about what player one plays, all right? So, for example, one sort of example for this specific game. Player one's strategy is, is, is R, or let's put it this way. First, a simpler example. Uh, player one's strategy is L, player two's strategy is U, and then mu is equal to one, all right? So what does that mean? That means, according to this strategy profile and strategy and belief system, let's call it this way, strategy and strategy profile and the belief system, player one is going to play left, player two is going to play U, and player two believes that player one is going to play L, all right? So it makes perfect sense, right? I mean, as if uh, they, I mean, player two observe, as if observe this, this action of player one. It doesn't, but it just holds a belief, which happens to be so sort of a correct belief. However, this is also admissible. The, the next one is also admissible uh, strategy profile and belief system. Uh, L, uh, sorry, a mixed strategy, uh, one half L, one half uh, R, and mu equals one. This is also admissible uh, uh, strategy profile and belief system. What is that strategy? I forgot, I'm sorry. Uh, st strategy of the second player, mu equals one. It says player one is going to randomize between left and right with equal probabilities, and player two is going to play U, and then player one, player two, I'm sorry, believes that uh, he is going to be in this decision now. By the way, I'm not asking if these strategies are optimal. Not yet, okay? We're not there yet. Here, I'm just saying that a belief system and the strategy profile is going to give us what players would play and what players may believe, all right? 